In this first video, we're going to set up a Python development environment with a virtual environment and detail how to manage dependencies with pip. So this video is meant to be coupled with the second video where I discuss Git and GitHub and provide an overall workflow for you to follow when developing. And this tutorial is tailored for Mac users, but the commands are nearly the same for Windows and Linux. So you can easily tailor the commands to fit your specific operating system. Be sure that you have pip as well as virtual env installed before you begin. And if you need help, check out the Real Python courses at realpython.com if you haven't already for setup instructions for both Windows and Linux users as well as for help installing pip and virtual env. All right, so let's get going. So I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal here. So to start, each separate Python project should reside in its own directory. So for this example, let's call this directory project example. And if you're working along with me, which I highly recommend that you do, you can create this directory somewhere convenient. So perhaps somewhere off your desktop or your My Documents folder. So I'm going to go ahead and create this directory, call it project example. And then once the directory is created, we can go ahead and CD into it. Now we need to activate a virtual environment to create an isolated project area using a tool called virtual env, which is used for managing project dependencies. For example, perhaps you are working on two Django projects, one with Django 1.5, and the other with Django 1.6. So in order to use different versions of Django on the same machine, you need to isolate those projects from one another. So let's start by creating a virtual m using the command virtual m. And then you want to specify the name of the directory that you want the virtual environment configuration stored in. And so once the directory is created, you need to activate the virtual environment by using the source command along with the path here. Then activate. And this path is going to be slightly different for Windows users. So you can tell that you're within the virtual environment because you can see the folder here within parentheses. And now that the virtual environment is activated, we can now install any of the project dependencies that we need. So let's say for this example, we'll be using Flask. So we can install it with pip. So pip install Flask. And so since we have a virtual environment activated, it's going to install Flask only within this directory. Okay, cool, so that is installed. So pip keeps track of all the installed dependencies. And you can see the currently installed dependencies within a specific virtual environment using the command pip freeze. So we installed Flask and Flask is dependent on these other dependencies here, which is why you see more than Flask. And you also need to keep track of your dependencies in a file called requirements.txt, which must reside in your project root directory. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have multiple directories in this root directory. Well, the requirements.txt needs to go in the top directory. And you can generate this file automatically using the command pit freeze. And then we can pipe it to requirements.txt. You can see here the file. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up this project in Sublime and you can see requirements.txt here with all the dependencies and their versions here. So going back to the command line, just remember that anytime you add a dependency to your project, remember to also add it to your requirements file. And so with our environment set up and dependencies installed, you can now start coding. Okay, so I created a basic Hello World Flask app and if you want, you can grab the code for this in the repo, but it doesn't really matter for the sake of this tutorial. If you want, just go ahead and make a Hello World 
basic hello world script. So just uh, let's create a file here. So call it hello world. And let's go ahead and print hello world. All right, so let's say that we're done coding and at a stopping point. So we now want to incorporate a version control system called git into our workflow. And this is exactly where we'll pick up in the next video. So I will see you then.